Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. There are people who the only emphasis as far as the growth and the development of the believer is concerned is prayer. And I have seen many believers who have prayed and I have seen the benefits of prayer in their life. And I've seen them compromise on the other principles and I've seen the deficiency of those principles in their lives. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, not a key. Are we together? So what is it about prayer? What exactly is prayer? At what point do they say a man is praying? Is it when you are talking? So that we just allow them to do the work. But when, when do I know if I am talking, if you meet me talking, does that mean I'm praying? <laughs> is it when I mention the name Jesus that I'm praying? We're not doing an extensive study on the subject of prayer. But you see, the only way you become efficient in prayer is when you are taught. You will never truly be able to pray efficiently until you are taught. The disciples came to Jesus and they said, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples. They were not prayerless people. They were inefficient in their prayers. They noticed that there was a way Jesus prayed and there were results that came from his prayer life. And that they also prayed, but it looked like their lives did not capture any result. And they said, teach us to pray. But for the purpose of our discussion this morning, we are looking at prayer with respect to experiencing personal revival. So, I have studied that prayer, according to scripture, achieves four main things in the life of the believer. And I just want to bring it to our understanding and then we'll have some time to pray. I believe there may be more, but from my study of scripture, I have found out that the prayer ministry seeks to achieve four principal things in the life of the believer. Are you ready? Number one. The first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is as a tool for transformation. Transformation. The first, and believe it or not, the highest assignment of prayer in a believer's life is for transformation. Popular scripture, Luke chapter 9, from verse 28 and 29 this is jesus now luke chapter 9 28 and 29 and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings he took peter and john and james and went up into a mountain to pray so jesus went to pray read verse 29 with me if you can see it projected ready one to read and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. Believe me, prayer is able to help the believer evolve into higher and superior versions of yourself. That the weak you, the small you, the timid you, the flesh-driven you, the carnal you can evolve into a superior version of yourself if you know how to pray. Show me a weak believer, timid. Show me a believer that is bankrupt of light. Your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit deadened. Subject that person to a constructive, methodical pathway of prayer. And you will, a champion will be waiting for you at the other end. Many believers are weak because they do not pray. They do not pray with the understanding that prayer is meant for transformation. 
why would Jesus pray as the word? Transformation. You know why people get saved in church, respectfully speaking? And after many years, you look at them, there's no growth, there's no transformation. Preachers who keep laboring to teach truth and they keep shouting, Amen, receive it. And after many years, you sit down with them and speak and you are almost heartbroken as a preacher because it looks like you've been wasting your time. I tell you, for many of them, they've not subjected themselves methodically to the ministry of prayer. Are we together? No discernment, no sensitivity, cannot receive spiritual things. That veil after many years is still there. You subject people through the ministry of prayer and leave them there and watch what happens. You just watch what happens. There is a transition that begins to happen to them. Their language begins to change. Not just the prayer language, but their language, the construct of their understanding begins to change. Their confidence begins to increase. Let me tell you, find someone who is suffering from complex and inferiority. Among the many things you, you bring as a remedy, subject that person through seasons of prayer and watch what happens. Prayer, if and when done properly, is powerful. Are we learning? Yeah. Transformation. When we pray, we are transformed. That light that is locked up within our spirits find expression. It is true. So if you find out that you've been stagnated at the same level spiritually, you look at yourself and there is no growth. January comes, December comes, January comes, December comes, prophecies come, and nothing. You don't feel that movement. You can give yourself the discipline of prayer for a season. Prayer like eating, prayer like exercise does not happen. You don't see all the results in one day. It, the key is consistency consistency you're not going to live carnally for 30 years and then pray for five minutes and expect it to cover up for all that time you will need to be consistent i would always encourage people it's not a doctrine but it's a formula i have found in my life if you want to take your destiny serious master the art of praying in the night believe me when i tell you this you go and read your bible and see what prayer in the night happened at midnight Paul and Silas, you see it. While the day was, before the day would break, Jesus would leave and go to pray. These are mysteries of the spirit. Chances are excellent that it would not be easy for you to pray effectively in the day. Your eyes alone would distract you. Are we together? Your phone is there ringing, everyone is calling you, children are disturbing you. You'll not pray that way. Your, your entire being must be involved in prayer. If it does not touch you, it will not touch God. Some of us start praying and before you know it, a text comes in and you hold it and you're like, ah, okay, let me just quickly respond. And one hour you are there. Two hours you're there and at the end of it, you, you just remember you were praying, saying Jesus' name on your way out. You didn't pray. In all honesty, you didn't pray. You can't get the same results with someone who came and gave his heart and his all in prayer. Please say after me, in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to pray. Preachers, we must trust God for grace and subject our membership to intense moments and seasons of prayer. Not just prayer and fasting. Prayer that we create a way to supervise their growth. Especially leaders. When leaders in church don't pray, they will give the man of God headache. When leaders don't pray, they will be carnally minded. Simple decisions that should be, it should be unanimous if they were sensitive. Because they are walking in the flesh. There will always be carnal and mundane arguments. Don't trust people who don't pray. Don't trust what they tell you. Don't trust what you hear. They are speaking in the flesh. No matter how well-meaning. Before I trust you, let me see your prayer life. Are we learning? Number two. 
the second assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is as a tool for making requests i wrote here and obtaining promises there is an allowance in the prayer ministry for us to make requests and to obtain promises philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 and 7 addresses the issue of anxiety once and for all philippians 4 6 and 7 it says be careful the word there is anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god back to verse 6 please let your request be made known you see the bible is saying it here don't assume that god knows what you are what you are going through or what you desire he says let your requests be made known unto god and then he says verse 7 that the god of peace shall the and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding shall guard your heart and your minds if we're dealing with the subject of prayer in a standard way i will teach you something about the relationship between prayer and peace there are there is the tripartite manifestation of the kingdom every time you see this tripartite manifestation the kingdom has come righteousness peace and joy the most the most um the most how do i put it now the one that is easy to detect of all of them is peace in fact it is one of the ways that god speaks psalm 85 verse 8 tells you that he speaks peace you can know that your prayer is answered not because of the appearance of the results i will hear what god the lord will speak for he will speak peace unto his people. Someone once asked me and said, Apostle, how long do you pray? I said, that's not a very wise question. It's a sincere question, but it's not a wise one. Never in the Bible is timing of prayer given as the basis for effective prayer. No. No. When Jesus spoke about watching for one hour, it was just a reference. There is never a doctrine. You do not pray based on timing. You pray based on contact and you pray based on result. You pray until peace comes. If it takes 10 hours, stretch that far. Of course, naturally speaking, if you discipline yourself to prayer, you will invest and commit time. But to use an alarm clock and just pray for 5 hours or 2 hours or 1 hour and then stop it, you are being carnal. That's the reason why that prayer does not profit people. In true fellowship, timing is usually not an issue. Imagine that someone comes to you, he's, he's not being official, maybe a husband and a wife, and he's talking and the man is checking his watch and he says, okay, 10 minutes, may God bless you. And she says, so what were we doing? He said, fellowship, that's not fellowship, that's discussion, that's formal, whatever, office duty, that's fine. So we come to God and there are times that God would just want his presence to rest upon you. Do you know, there are times that it would take you more than one hour saying thank you. Just thank you. And there are times that you go to pray where you will shockingly not be able to say anything, yet you are praying. There is a level of stillness that is prayer. God defines the menu for that, 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 that feast. He is the Lord of hosts. You don't just go with your preconceived idea. Point one, Father, thank you. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah, the, the rose of um, Sharon, the lily of the valley. Now that is done. Father, I'm here again. I've told you this thing. I've been in Abuja. This house rent, 600,000, 1 million. What is it that you cannot give me? Is it that? And you are praying. This is you praying now. Hear yourself praying. I've not backslidden. I've been trusting. You don't think I don't have options. It's just because you are God. And oh, no, 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 no. And then we wrap up with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you because I know you hear me. And heaven is watching. Angels are watching. Demons are also watching in shock. And say, what kind of ignorant people are these? Can I tell you this? If you must pray, your heart must be involved. But let me tell you sincerely. The Bible says that prayer 
can be used to obtain requests. Let me encourage you. Learn to pray and to take every matter of your life to God in prayer and expect him to respond. Expect him to respond. Expect him to respond. Lord, I thank you. There's this thing happening in my office. I thank you. But you see, in making requests, God does not answer you because you asked him. He answers you because he said he would do it. So if you cannot connect what you want to what God has said, it will not be answered. God only answers prayers because what you want is connected to what he has said he would do. The protocol of God's dealings with men is that he only does what he says. If God has not said it, whether to you or that which is written, there is no basis for him doing it. I want to rise. God, I want to rise. Sincere prayer, but that prayer will not be answered. You have to find what he has said about your rising. Lord, I want to rise. And you have said this. You see, God only does what he says. He does not do what you want. He does what you want that is connected to what he has said. Please learn this very simple principle. It's the reason why many believers do not obtain answers to prayers. They ask, but you see, they do not ask properly. He's bound to his word. He, that he honors his word even above his name. So when you approach the parliament of heaven, there must be intelligence to your prayer. Are we together? Yes. Lord, I'm tired of suffering. Move me forward. What is the basis? Why should God commit himself that far? And you find a scripture. It was the Lord that caused Moses and Aaron to advance. And that God is no respecter of persons. You see, you are constructing your request with intelligence. He said to present your cause. He said to bring forth your strong reasons. Number three. The third assignment of prayer in the life of the believer I wrote down here is for spiritual legislation. You can put in brackets, decrease and creation. Amazing. Hmm. Two scriptures. Numbers 14 and verse 28. Numbers 14 and verse 28. Tell them as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. Second scripture, Job 22 and verse 28. Job 22 and verse 28. It says, thou shalt also decree a thing. Listen, there is a dimension of prayer that is not talking to God. It is using his authority to create possibilities. Prayer is not always talking to God. There is a dimension of prayer that is responsible for making decrees over creation and creating possibilities in your life. It is not always about asking God to do things. There are times that in prayer, you use that God-given authority to now begin to create possibilities. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. If you call it a blessed tomorrow, that becomes the name thereof. If you call it favor in spite of the storms, that is the name it will bear. Your days and your moments are waiting for, them, for you to give them an identity. Waiting for you to give them definition. If you do not give them a name, the devil will give them any name and they will become what they were instructed to become. Are we together? This is very powerful. That you wake up in the morning and you decree, this is the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice and I am glad in it. I prophesy and I declare that Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. And you walk through that day as if creation owes you. 
and you begin to see all kinds of miracles and all kinds of doors open for you and this brings that that the joy that comes from knowing that your life is producing and commanding results will bring a consolation to your christian experience listen to me do not be silent learn to create possibilities are we together every day is at the mercy of your speaking instruct it to become for you what the word of god says should be the third assignment of prayer you must learn to legislate we have i'm sure in this church and probably following we have members of parliament in this nation house of assembly senate and did you know all that they do is to use words develop and enact policies and these policies directly affect people passes through first reading second reading and all of that they adopt it it becomes law speaking they are paid to speak they speak from their minds from their thinkings from their perspectives if you keep quiet over your destiny is what you do not want that will happen i assure you whether you plant or not something will always grow in the farm provided there is rain and unfortunately it's what you do not want that will grow are we together speak over your business speak over your ministry speak over your family your assignment is to keep speaking in the name of jesus christ i will not give birth for sorrow in the name of jesus my mind is fruitful the favor of the lord is upon me in the name of jesus i am escaped from these six things even the scourging tongues of men you are praying and you are making decrees you forget about what who is thinking or not thinking your assignment your destiny is absolutely dependent on the power of creation things only happen to you if you are silent negative things i mean number four are you ready for this the fourth assignment of prayer is as a tool for warfare and intercession warfare and intercession apostle is this necessary hmm. live long that's my answer i don't have much to tell you please make sure you are alive for long and you will revisit this message again and again and again john 10 10 the thief cometh not satan is called the thief i don't know how many of you want to be friends with thieves the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy this is his tripartite character of destruction to steal to kill and to destroy first john chapter 5 and verse 19 we're wrapping up now first john 5 19 someone's destiny is changing this morning in the name of jesus first john 5 19 and we know that we are of god it says please help me read the remaining part and the whole world stop does that include the region of your office does that include where your church is does that include your village does that include nigeria does that include the space of the land you just bought the whole world lieth in wickedness when speaking with my people i would always make this observation nigerians know how to lament emotionally and we say who did i offend very comforting statement but how erroneous you do not have to offend anyone everyone is born in the middle of an old story that you are forced to be part of the story of the issue between light and darkness is not something that started with us everyone was born in the middle of an old and ancient story and can i tell you that story is so constructed that the moment you appear in it you must act in that scene nobody invites you to be part of that movie provided you are born you pass through the womb of a woman you must be part of it satan knows that everyone born of a woman 
is a potential tool in the hand of God. Number one, he does not even give you a chance to grow. If he can kill you, he will with joy. I guarantee you. Satan does not have to wait for you to be born again, to be trained and mentored. Uh -uh. In the Bible, children were killed. He killed them without thinking twice. And then, you now come to stand before God's people and surrender your heart to Jesus Christ. I hope you know that when you were giving your life to Christ, it was not the preacher who led you that was seeing you alone. The realm of the spirit, including the demons, principalities. And like I would tell my people, most believers do not understand the power of the life they just received. But Satan and demons understand what you received. They know the potential of this life you have received. And they know that by your declaration, you have drawn a line. I think it was on Sunday, I was talking to my people and I was helping them to see and appreciate the extent of the rebellion and the stubbornness of Satan that for millions millions of years at least as we know maybe more from the time he was casted from heaven satan is still fighting god till today what determination that he will not give up satan comes to you and talks to you about god as if he does not you can imagine as if he does not factor his defeat in the discussion satan never talks to you as if he's defeated I hope you will laugh let me tell you what i'm about to tell you someone came and met me i think i was praying for people after service one time and a young boy came just stood before me and i saw something that looked like the poster of an election and i looked at him and he came with conviction and i opened it and i wanted to run away he was coming out for president of nigeria Having shouted and thought that all things were possible. I looked at this, my dear brother, and I didn't know how, how, what, what angle do I become diplomatic? Do I go directly? I looked at this boy and you will know, you will see the gaps in knowledge, the decades of learning this guy would need to. Ah. Yes, president, I don't know what party, I'm not sure there was a party yet. In all fairness, in all fairness, I'm not, if I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. He stood at the line for prayer. Said he came to receive it. I, I told him, I said, look, um, my, my dear brother, let me tell you this. Um, God walks in seasons, number one, and life is in levels. The gentleman did not agree. You see that? And I told him, I said, do you know what it means to be the president of any nation? And then the president of Nigeria. He was absolutely convinced. Absolutely. It would have been better if he said maybe he had a dream or prophecy. He just came and just believed that he wants to change Nigeria. He's never been class rep. He's never been um, maybe... Uh, uh, not even counselor leader of some whatever it is you think god hates us that much as a nation i know we've sinned against god as a nation but oh, come on please there's still a remnant that this gentleman was almost making trouble i just said kneel down just laid hands on him and said please just just carry your trouble and go i'm not ready <laughs> So imagine, do you know, with that kind of determination, there is nothing you would tell that guy. That's the kind of determination Satan has over your destiny. That as unwise as it looks, Satan still believes in his agenda. That's, what, that's the point I'm trying, to, I'm trying to pass across. You would think Satan should be so afraid because of your last testimony and not come again. Satan you watch him the bible says he left jesus for a season 
you testified as a triumph of light over darkness if i were satan i would give up the way the miracle happened he stopped the first child and you gave birth to twins and you think satan will fold his arms he will rest and come back again this is the kind of adversary we have if you do not know who satan is and his level of determination you will take him for granted to your peril i'm showing you the necessity for the warfare and the intercessory dimension of prayer satan will kill anything he finds to kill you know satan does not have an agenda of himself he studies what god wants and creates an agenda out of it it's not like he has a preset no 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 he looks at your life he does not have any personal bias towards you he just wants to know what god is doing and he hears that god wants to lift you that in this year god is taking roger to another dimension he says fine now we have an assignment his assignment is a subset of whatever god is saying anytime god is speaking don't you ever think you are the only one hearing satan is a very intelligent listener when he came to adam he said what did god say i don't tell me what i just want to know what god said because my assignment is tied to what he said are we learning so the moment he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy god had spoken to you i'm lifting you this year and i'm bringing honor and glory to your life don't just say amen and stop you must engage you go to the place of prayer and ward off all of those things first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 have a few more minutes first peter 5 and verse 8 let me show you a very powerful scripture it says be sober first peter 5 and verse 8 be sober it says be vigilant what does it mean to be vigilant to be vigilant means to be sensitive to not be careless to be discerning it says because your adversary not your boss not the one fighting you those are puppets the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour jesus gave us power and authority over satan there are families who continue to watch the devil wreck them and shred them into pieces and they keep getting depressed there are lives you think the devil wants you to continually be anointed in ever increasing dimensions he's seen the havoc that the anointing in your life has done so far to the kingdom of darkness will he grant you access to intelligence and systems and structures that can multiply the anointing he will fight it tooth and nail satan knows what you did with the last 10 million god gave you he knows how the house of god benefited you think he will sit down and just allow doors to be open anyhow you don't know satan he's every other thing but lazy and foolish two things you cannot credit to satan he's not lazy and he's not foolish apostle why is it that other people who are not christians they don't even pray and they move forward there is nothing that is pro kingdom in their agenda so satan has no concern about fighting them satan attacks but in truth he has a protocol listen many of you watch football if you are playing say a semi-final or a finals and you are supposed to weaken that team your your target will be the the strongest of the, the key players they call them is that true if you can bring one or two out i think you've done a good job as far as making a contribution to the defeat of that team that's what satan is doing so the fact that satan is not letting you rest should tell you the role you play in god's agenda why is it that out of 10 people in your family he seems to have isolated you i tell you why because in his mind you are equal to the strength of the 10 people rather than seeking to destroy the 10 people one by one why is satan focusing on your church why is satan focusing on you as a man of god you are worth to him in his thinking you are worth to him more than five thousand preachers 
fighting you is most profitable to him than fighting is a way of conserving energy when he comes to you it should be a consolation that you are really valuable in God's agenda is God speaking now Satan leave my family alone that's not it he's found out that there is something in that family you are not aware of that is pro kingdom satan why are you fighting my marriage why are you fighting my fruitfulness why are you fighting this satan does not fight anything for itself he looks beyond that thing and sees what it will achieve so hannah if samuel is coming out of you get ready to be barren it's not about your womb it's about samuel who else will anoint saul who else will anoint david elizabeth if john is coming out of you who will ordain jesus who will save the world you are on my list joseph if your rising will bring preservation to god's people so that they become god's covenant people the people from whom the messiah will come then get ready for trouble can i tell you this this is an information i'm giving you as we prepare to pray i can tell you this by revelation and i can tell you this from scripture satan attacks but he does not attack anyhow he attacks based on on how much point that attack will score as far as his advancement is concerned so he can isolate preachers he can isolate businessmen if you plan to be serious with god listen to this message if you don't plan to be serious with god that's all right but if you plan to be serious with god i want you to know that not everybody is willing to be serious with god the moment you declare to be serious with god you have drawn the line with satan will he come yes uninvited yes is called a thief a thief's invited all you need to do is to be successful build a house your success and your results is the invitation but we have a god in heaven now thanks be to god who causes us how long always now thanks be to god preacher now thanks be to god businessman now thanks be to god that in spite of the schemings of darkness there is already a way of escape someone should rejoice that there is a way of escape a way of escape in prayer i can engage by the power of prayer and subdue everything that looks like a manifestation of darkness this morning we are going to take five minutes to engage i know that we have spoken about these four points but i am concerned about the fourth because this is where many of us are in and in the next five minutes i like us to take some time to pray can i tell you there are certain gates you need to bring down this morning you need to tell yourself enough is enough the bible says i daniel understood by books he knew when his season had come to an end when seasons come to an end do not let satan prolong it thus far have you come he said no further shall you go it's time to release the gates of ministry to release the gates of can i tell you creation is waiting for that command if you know how to pray you will triumph and prevail over situations and circumstances i am a product of prayer i know what prayer has done in my life and i know what it continues to do no matter how weak a man is let that man pray no matter how big the situation is let that man pray luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint he said there was a king a judge an unjust judge that that man did not fear god and he did not regard men and there was a weak
helpless widow who came to him and said avenge me my adversary and the bible says for a long time he will not hear her but for her importunity her persistence and staying power and jesus says that if this woman she had no system of physical defense but she knew how to pray the man said even though i do not fear god and i do not regard men yet this woman by her continual disturbance she can weary me if you can weary men you can weary closed doors you can weary closed seasons and open them up are we learning please in the next five minutes there's no prayer point you are praying in the spirit and you are engaging with understanding and then if one or two prayer points come from it i'll communicate it but i'm sure that if 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 i'm allowed you can just walk around within your limited space but i want you to pray seriously the next five minutes you are praying this is warfare and intercession lift your voice and begin to pray you're praying this is for your destiny this is for your ministry is someone praying hold on to the horns of the altar and pray it's time to shift climates and seasons my life must experience a personal revival it's time for that which is asleep to be awoken in me pray you who is following in your home following in your office make sure you are connecting and praying right where you are go ahead and pray the hindrances that have come as a result of controlling powers over my life and over my destiny i challenge you by the god of heaven in the name of jesus from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching